Certainly the most innovative new feature in Photoshop CS5 has to be Content Aware Fill. Let's take a look at how it works, where its strengths are, and where its definite weaknesses are. So here we've got this image that <laughs> is not my cat. It's a uh, very unhappy looking cat from the Recoleta Cemetery in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a loose selection with the lasso tool around this object, this cat that we want to remove from the background. Now, part of the trick to using Content Aware Fill is that you never want to come in very close with your selection on the thing that you want to remove from the scene. You actually want to leave a good amount of space around the thing that you're trying to remove. So here I've got this cat selected. Now let me fix that selection over there using the shift key to just add to the selection over on this side. So now I've got this really loose selection around the cat. Let's get to the content aware fill. I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and press the delete key. That's the quick key combination to quickly bring up the fill dialog. And now the fill dialog automatically defaults to content aware. I'm going to go ahead and leave the blend and opacity modes exactly as they are normal blend with 100% opacity and I click on the OK button. Now we're going to run this on an actual representative image of the kind that you're likely to feed to Content Aware Fill. So this is a 10 megapixel 28 megabyte image. Now we're not editing the processing time here so you can get a real idea for what's going on in terms of the rendering speed of this effect. By the way this is running on a MacBook Pro 2.1 gigahertz processor as you can see, with this particular image, Content Aware Fill did not do a really great job. Why? Well, that's because this is a relatively artificial background. This tile pattern has got a bunch of straight lines. It's not real natural in terms of its design. It's basically got straight lines. It's a manufactured object. And this is where Content Aware Fill definitely shows a weakness. We can see that in its patching and it's trying to create a composite background from the existing background, you can sort of get a sense for how Content Aware Fill works by looking at this. This gives you a clear idea that for these kinds of image retouching projects, Content Aware Fill is perhaps a little less magical than you would hope it would be. Let's go to another example here. I've got my brother, Barry. Um, also, this shot taken down in Buenos Aires. This is another 10 megapixel shot. I've gone ahead and created an alpha channel mask for Barry. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the command key and click on that alpha channel. And I can see the selection come up on the screen. I'll do control delete. Brings up content aware fill. This is another example of an image where we've got basically an artificial background. A manufactured thing. Let's see what the content aware fill algorithm will do with this. And again, we're leaving processing speeds untouched in here so you can see how long this effect really takes to render on something that's not a web resolution image. And you can see the progress bar sort of dragging along here. Again, this is a 2.16 gigahertz MacBook Pro with three gigabytes of RAM. So it's fairly representative of the kind of machine someone's likely to use when using Photoshop. Now, we can get a real clear idea for what's happened here. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the selection and let's zoom in so you can really see what Content Aware Fill has done. Now, in this example, because we have this type on the background, I can get a pretty good idea for how Content Aware Fill patches together the things that it's trying to replace. So we can see that it's basically gone, and I'll, I'll go ahead and do Command Z so you can get a before and after. It's gone ahead and pulled the N from the word up above here. It got that C, it's pulled out a couple of O's, Actually, it's 1-0. See a couple of C's here. It didn't do this straight line really well. It didn't actually continue the natural straight line of the bottom of the sign here. And as I scroll, I can also see it really didn't do a great job down here either. This kind of an image is another example of one that probably is going to need to have some significant amount of manual reprocessing, manual touch-up work in order to make this perfect. Let's go ahead and zoom back. But again, you can kind of see how the content aware fill is patched together this background, quick before and after. So what is content aware fill really designed to do? Well, it's designed to deal with images like this one, 
What if you want to take away this fire hydrant from the background where you've got grass, you've got uh, some plants in the back here, we've got vegetation, we've got rocks, we've got dirt. These kinds of natural backgrounds, what we would call an entropic background, entropic of course coming from the word entropy, these kinds of situations are much, much happier when confronted with content aware fill. And so far I've been using content aware fill in terms of creating a selection and invoking the fill dialog. But it turns out that the spot healing brush also has a content aware mode in it. So that instead of making a selection, we can paint this effect on. So I'm gonna go ahead using the spot healing brush. I'm painting, and again, not very, very accurately over this uh, fire hydrant. And we can see what's gonna happen here. Now I let go, and again, we've got a 10 megapixel file, 28 megabytes, so you're getting a real sense for the processing speed of Content Aware Fill. It's uh, not the fastest thing in the world, but it's certainly faster than doing this by hand. So we can see here it's processing this image. And um, I could tell jokes, but oh, there's not enough time. Now you see what Content Aware Fill is really designed to do. In this particular example, it happened to do a really great job. Now, it isn't perfect, and let's zoom in again so you can get a real sense of what's happened here. Now, as you can see, there are some areas where Content Aware Fill will definitely, it cloned this uh, chain thing down here. Or actually, no, it didn't clone it, it left it. So, for example, this is, an, this is a situation where we have to go in and do retouching. And, um, I'll just go ahead and use the content aware mode in the spot healing brush on this piece of chain. Let's see what happens. Just paint over that and boom, it's gone. Now that's actually pretty darn cool. And as we can see, it did a fairly decent job patching the background. But again, oh, look, let's get a piece of that, uh, that chain right there. Whoop. Just swipe up and let it fill it in and boom, there it is. That's what content aware fill is really good at. Stuff where the background is basically used to mask the results of what's happening. So it's really great for the kind of things that typically might actually present a significant challenge in image retouching and reconstruction work. Let's zoom back. Now, there's no way for you to know that there was a fire hydrant there. There really isn't. Only a very trained eye would know how to look at the edges of this, would know how to look at discontinuities in the texture to know that there was an object previously in that position. I'll just step backwards here and you can see what we've done. That's pretty close to magic. One last example, here's this um, image I took in Amsterdam years ago. Now this is a lower resolution image. This was actually only taken with a three megapixel camera. And what I'm gonna do here is use the spot healing brush and just paint over these flowers, these tulips that are over here. And again, I'm not being very accurate in how I paint. I just kind of quickly hit this and now let it process. So this is again a three megapixel, nine megabyte file. Even though this is a pretty big area, because it's a lower res file, it does it pretty quickly. Now that is a very decent patch job. That's something that again, if you were doing it by hand, it would have taken significantly longer. There's one last little thing I'd like to show you about Content Aware Fill. And it's in regards to making selections and working around this idea that selections need to be feathered. So here, for example, I've got this statue of uh, the head of David. And what I'm going to do, I've got three different quick selection masks I've made. One that I painted on with a, a quick mask mode. Another one I made with the polygonal lasso tool. And then a third one that's a blurred version of the one that I made with the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to go ahead and click back on the RGB channels. I'll hold down the command key and the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run Content Aware Fill through basically a sharp edge selection. One of the things that I discovered about using Content Aware Fill is that it has its own edge feathering built in to the algorithm so that when you make a selection and that selection has only a little bit of anti-aliasing or softness on the edge, um, content Aware Fill is actually designed to work with those kinds of selection masks. It does its own built-in feathering 
And here we can see that while it removed the statue, um, it's it's okay. Is it perfect? Well, a trained eye would actually look at this and notice that there were some inconsistencies with how the vegetation sort of changed right here. But as you can tell, it did a not bad job. Now, again, this was a, a mask, a selection that had no softness or feathering on the edges. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And now let's run the same effect, the same content aware fill using a soft feathered version of that hard mask. Let's see what happens. So I do my control delete, up comes content aware fill as an option in fill. I go ahead and I click on okay. I let it process. And what I've discovered is that if you feather your selection ahead of time with the assumption that this would help content aware fill blend the edges of what it does inside with the surrounding pixels. Instead, because content aware fill does its own built in feathering, if you have a feathered selection, voila, now you see the problem. Essentially, we've got the feathered selection sort of not interacting properly with the way that content aware fill tries to feather the processing of what it's doing. So, the moral of the story. Don't bother feathering your selections when you use Content Aware Fill. We hope this brief demonstration gives you a decent understanding and insight into how this fascinating new capability, Content Aware Fill, will potentially make your retouching life a little easier. Thanks for watching.